Hey everyone, let's talk about the digital Sabbath assignment, the essay itself and also the steps that are involved. So on your week four agenda, you'll find a link to this very assignment that lays out more or less what you're expected to do for your digital Sabbath. You are expected to unplug from technology. At bare basics, that means no cell phone, no computer, no internet of any sort, no television, no headphones. It's a little bit up to you how, how committed you want to be to the digital Sabbath, but you're going to examine the role that technology plays in your life. For essay one, you looked at how technology affects people sort of out in the wild, you know, in, in public, so to speak. So now we're going to turn that same method of inquiry, we're going to turn it inward and look at ourselves. Okay, the, um, the best way for me to talk about this assignment is to just hit the major beats of it. You're going to, first of all, for an invention journal this week, you're going to create a tech diary. Okay, and that is going to be, whoops, let me scroll up here. You're going to chart your technology use for a day. Uh, anytime you use technology, you're going to record it for this assignment. You're going to keep track, and you're, then you're going to categorize that use. What time of day is it? How long did you use it? What type of technology was it? What was the purpose of it? And then, you know, a, a categorization, if that is a word, uh, will help as well. Personal, academic, professional, you know, what sort of use uh, is it? So. I have three examples, just like I do for every invention journal. From here on out, you'll have three different examples. So Kaylin here has a very nice Google Doc that charts her use. Less than one, that meaning less than one minute. I had to look that up, I believe. So you see, her day starts at 5:45 a.m. when her iPhone woke her up, and it goes until she skypes for 74 minutes on her iPad. 10:46, nice long day for Kaylin. She did this um, twice. This is a little above and beyond, but really can't hurt. Um, so the type of technology, the total amount of time, and then the uh, approximate percent of daily usage. Okay, and then uh, the tally being uh, an important part here, nine hours and 56 minutes. So she did it on a Saturday, nine hours and 58 minutes. How strange, you'd think that a weekday, maybe you would use technology a little more, but on a Saturday, just as much. How, you know, how interesting, right? She uh, also, Kaylin, very, very good student, uh, went above and beyond and did an analysis and reflection. She's basically getting her essay two started here and uh, really not a bad idea if you want to do the same thing. Other examples will kind of lead you to the same conclusion of what I'm looking for in terms of this invention journal. So you can see much more typical time for a student to get to sleep in 9.30, probably much later for many of you uh, on a Sunday. You can see all the text messages that get sent. Um, this is from last year, Flappy Birds. I'm sure it'll be, you know, uh, Trivia Crack, or I don't know what, year, or what you use your time for. Um, there's Spotify. You can see GPS. <laughs> like uh, the student's name is uh, D'Angelo. He even documented the electric stove that he used to cook himself dinner at 11.07 p.m., which is really late time uh, for me to be having dinner, but, uh, you know, to each his own. And then uh, the total time used in minutes, and then the percent daily usage. So. 1,228 minutes. And just to round things out here, we can look at one more. There's no uh, sort of analysis and reflection from uh, some of these students, but again, you'll just be starting your essay a little soon. So you just take notes on all the different types of technology that you use, whether it's your phone, whether it's computer, you know, uh, laptop, Android, of course, get on Pinterest right before bedtime. Uh, and then yeah, 10 hours and 59 minutes. So your numbers are going to come out, uh, you know, and you're going to crunch those numbers a little bit just to see the role that technology, um, you know, how much technology is eating up your day um, for good or for evil. You know, I'm not, uh, there's no value on it just to see how often you're using your, uh, your technology that is, you know, available to you. You can always use a spreadsheet in a Google Doc for this. You can always uh, try other stuff as well. You have this whole bit.ly bundle of all these different software, online free technology to create anything. Um, Lucid Press is really cool. Uh, let's see, Socratic is very nice. You can create a video. If you want to just run it down that way, um, go for it. Be adventurous, please. So that's going to be the first step is you're going to create a tech diary. Then you're going to develop a plan for, and that's going to be a discussion post. So before you embark on your digital Sabbath, you're going to des describe your specific customized plan. So we go over to Angel here. Um, you can see it's in lessons, and then um, it's right there. SA2 brainstorming. This is one of the last times you'll be using Angel. I can, I can 
I can hear you weeping from here. Uh, so what you're going to do, uh, no replies are required. I just want everybody to kind of see what everybody else is planning to do. So who's doing it? You or someone you interview. I'll talk about that in a second. When are you taking your digital Sabbath? That'll give me an idea of, uh, you know, uh, when everybody's getting this assignment completed. Why did you choose that day? How will you inform or warn people of your digital Sabbath so no one launches a search party when you don't answer your 700th text of the day? What are your cell phone rules? What are your computer rules? Um, what else will you avoid? Um, I'm really interested to see, uh, you know, your interpretation of what else deserves to be avoided during a digital Sabbath, whether it's, uh, I think I said this, like, you know, putting in headphones at the gym or whether it's, you know, <laughs> using uh, the microwave. You know, some students really take this to... Uh, an interesting extreme. You don't really necessarily have to, but I'm always curious to see uh, how committed students can become to, uh, you know, assignments for a college level class like this. And then any feelings or thoughts. Um, and so Ben is on his game, obviously. He's already got a discussion post created there. Um, oh, and of course, uh, sorry, how else will you, uh, how will you keep your uh, digital Sabbath log? So you'll have this completed by, uh, you know, uh, the what was it the ninth? So uh, that's going to be kind of the second step is you're going to plan your digital Sabbath. You're not just going to fly into it blindly and see what happens. This is not due yet because you haven't done your invention. Well, I guess I can go back to here. But you're going to keep a log of what you did, what you thought, and what you felt during, before, before, during, and after your digital Sabbath. So do whatever format you'd like. Um, digital tools are fine before and after your uh, digital Sabbath, but you're going to need to keep a pencil, pencil and paper around for the digital Sabbath itself because to record with technology would be to sort of violate the spirit of the assignment, wouldn't it? So example of a digital Sabbath log is right here. Feelings, you know, the time of day, what you did, you know, uh, and how it made you feel. Okay, pretty bored at this point. Okay, my in-head radio gave me a song from Rent. You know, this is a fairly detailed from a student um, that, uh, you know, uh, flew into the assignment with uh, an appropriate amount of, you know, sort of gusto. Other logs are not quite as detailed, but they still are effective. So the pre-Sabbath log, you know, the journal on um, the Tuesday, you know, and then, you know, leading up to the day of the digital Sabbath on a Wednesday. So that's a little more detailed in terms of, you know, times of day and what happened. And then uh, a post-Sabbath reflection, all the stuff, all these invention journals, I hope you're getting the hang of this, that the more energy you put into the invention journals, the easier the essays are to write. I think some of you are unfortunately learning that lesson the hard way, but say la vie. Okay, so you'll uh, create a DS log or um, interview transcript. Um, I'll talk about that here in a second. And then all that work is going to create, uh, is going to help you produce a three page essay that is not going to include, of course, a works cited page or a log. Uh, Another requirement is one outside source, and I'll talk about those in a, a little bit. You can do a references page if you're an APA person, um, but most people kind of start class from an, a, from an MLA perspective, and that's fine. Okay, um, so the two different ways to do this is, the first one is you take the digital Sabbath, and that's what I imagine. I've never had a student take option two yet. I'll, I'll put it that way. So uh, you take the Sabbath, and you do all the work on your own, and it becomes a sort of a personal essay. If this assignment is too scary for you or if you just can't see yourself committing to it or whatever, you can have someone else take the digital Sabbath for you, but just be warned it's a whole lot more work uh, and that's by design, that's intentional. You need to basically inform the person on what the digital Sabbath is and why uh, it's uh, sort of worthy of study. Then you have to interview the person who took the digital Sabbath for you and you, uh, then you write an essay that's basically from their perspective. It's a lot more work, trust me. If you're going to do that, uh, I'm going to know by the time you complete this assignment. And um, I'll probably like send you an email that's more or less like, are you sure you want to do this? And you'll uh, just have to commit to uh, that second option in a way that, like I said, no student has done um, up to this point. But, you know, there's a first time for everything. So your digital Sabbath uh, essay ultimately is going to be uh, a reflection on the experience, what it taught you, and then, uh, of course, the, uh, you know, the argument that you'd like to make as a base, uh, that, that, you know, is based on your experiences. So, what else can I tell you? You're going to be doing lots of reading up on Digital Sabbath, and, and um, I have it somewhere. They're also called Digital Detox. They're also called Analog Sundays. A lot of people really buy into this idea that uh, we're all too distracted, that our attention, when it's divided between all the devices and, you know, the messy business of living our lives, that uh, we're losing something essential, something, some element of our humanity, some, some people say. Uh, and as a result, unplugging becomes the sort of vital component of 
retaining our humanity. So anyway, uh, I got a lot of readings here and I'll probably keep adding to them. Anytime I find something cool, I add to this list things that I think will make you smarter about digital Sabbaths. Now, the foremost, first and foremost uh, reading that I would like for you to do at least um, in some way is page 237. Okay, I have it up here. Uh, the Distraction Addiction by Alex uh, Suyung Kim Pong. Okay, um, no, I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but I gave it a shot. So you click on the look inside. And you can, by all means, get this book out of the library. Find it any old way you want. I'm so glad my browsing history is over here. Uh, the Shining. There, I'm going to buy a $40 book on The Shining here very soon. My favorite movie of all time. How interesting for you. So you scroll down to 237. Nope, did I go too far? Okay, let's see. Uh-oh. Page is 231. Okay. Uh, uh, rules for mindful social media. Um, oh, there it is. DIY Digital Sabbath Appendix 3. Um, why is that not showing the page numbers? I wonder. Oh, I guess it 237 is clear, but or 238 is clear, but not 237. Anyhow, here you go. Um, so read at least this stuff, okay? Hopefully, you can, if you have trouble finding it, just um, send me an email. But uh, that's really the foundational text. Okay, uh, so, oops, sorry. I'm getting a little haphazard here towards the end. Uh, read up on these, learning to embrace the digital detox. I just heard um, this story on NPR. Um, oh, why is that just a picture? I'll have to fix that link. Let me see. Um, my teens are impulsive, addiction prone, and should protect their brains. This uh, was uh, a long form interview that was. Um, let me see if I can do this again. Let me fix this. Nope. Okay. Well, darn it. Uh, <laughs> there's no way I'm going to record this again because this is not my first try. So, uh, anyway, this is an interesting article once I fix the link. So, uh, I'm going to fix the link as soon as the screencast is over. Uh, you can see, you know, Brazil's parents send their kids to detox camp. Um, is student addiction to technology similar to drug cravings? Okay, there's uh, there's a certain amount of how do I put this uh, physicality involved in uh, distraction and uh, looking at screens and looking at pixels that hopefully you'll read up on as well. The uh, ideas behind the digital detox or the digital Sabbath are very uh, connected to you know that that the we're uh, you know harming ourselves kind of physically as well. That there's this like, like I said, the humanity, you know, the, you know, like our, our souls hurt so to speak, but also our bodies are breaking down things like carpal tunnel syndrome or what's called text neck. Uh, lots of um, health issues can come up from these uh, addictions as well. And so as you uh, create your uh, log, as you create your uh, digital Sabbath uh, uh, log, maybe you'll note you know kind of physicality that. Um, you know, the phantom vibrations that maybe you feel if you think you have your phone on you or how weird it feels not to have your phone in your pocket, right? Uh, so there's some readings that are connected to that as well. Your second reader response will be based on any of these. And you basically, if you find anything else related to the digital Sabbath, um, you're welcome to. Let me know what those are and make that the basis of your reader response too as well. So uh, you can pick any of these. And also, I don't think I said this, but your outside source uh, is... It's fine. You don't even, I'm not going to like require you to do it, like additional research. You can take one of these sources and use it in your digital Sabbath essay. And uh, but if there's something else that you want to look up, you're more than welcome to do so as well. Okay. Um, I, like I said, I will fix that link. Um, I think I've covered everything here. And then uh, week five will find us um, actually beginning to you know write the essay and doing peer review and all that fun stuff. So email me any questions. Uh, I had a few requests to create the screencast. I hope you'll. Uh, I hope you've you know, uh, gotten something out of it. But if there's a anything else I can clarify or any sort of help I can provide, please let me know. Thanks.